The best way to fail at indie game development is to never try, but technically, if you never try, you'll never fail. So let's assume you do try. Here's how to fail. So you're gonna make an open world game as an indie dev. <laughs> okay, well, it, it can be done. It's actually quite possible for a small team or even a solo dev to make a small, scaled, carefully thought out open world. But come on, that's not what you want to do. Go big or go home, am I right? But this is this is a good thing. I mean, just by attempting that, you're living up to the title of the series. But still, let me give you some helpful advice along the way. In an open world game, you'll obviously want the world to feel expansive and grand. Man, I'm going to be using this frame a lot. I mean, I could draw others, but eh, I'm lazy. Anyway, you'll want the world to feel expansive and grand, so make points of interest miles apart from each other with pretty much nothing but barren landscape between them. Put them far enough apart that when the player decides to take the trek using the fastest in-game mode of transportation, it still takes until real-life dinner is getting cold before they arrive. But hey, at least it looks pretty. Sure, players might find that boring after a while, so just add a fast travel option, basically giving the player the immersive equivalence of teleportation. The furthest town is just a loading screen away. That's why you designed this big open world so that players could ignore it. I, I mean, explore it. In any open world game, there is sometimes boundaries or other locations that you need to be off limits for some reason. And that reason is because you suck at designing open worlds. And the best way to signify this impenetrable boundary is with, like, a stick in the ground or having a few blades of grass blocking the path. Yeah, players aren't going to question that. Plus, nothing quite says open world as an arbitrary boundary does because you haven't leveled up enough. Besides, it's hard to tell your story if the player can just do whatever they want. And your story is so important that maybe it would be best to not actually give the player an open world and instead Instead, just make them believe it is one. In your open world game, tie all progression to the main storyline or quest. Yeah, you can make an open world, but that doesn't mean you have to use it. The purpose is to just look cool, and you can put open world in your game's description. Besides, players love pointless, empty husks of background content. When making an open world game, you have an important choice, procedurally generated or handcrafted. If you go with proc gen, have whatever you generate be super repetitive because there are only like three points of interest. But hey, there's lots of them, and some of them are turned 90 degrees, so it should be alright. Or you could use proc gen to create the illusion of a practically infinite expanded explorable world, but it's actually not. Like, that's it. It's just not. I'm not naming any games in particular, but if you know, you know. If you choose handcrafted, that would be great. It will look really beautiful the first two or three times, and then players would be really grateful you added fast travel because they've done seen all that before. Just give them the sort of Crawlvatross already so they can try out the one other build that might actually be viable besides Archer Assassin. Speaking of items, if you want to give the player another reason to explore your perfect world, add collectibles. You know, those pointless items that don't contribute to the story or even the gameplay in any way, but can still somehow convince players to go somewhere they otherwise wouldn't? Yeah, and you can put the collectibles in like completely believable locations, such as on the top of a roof of a tower, or in a chest in the bottom of a lake, or just sitting like right next to a busy highway where nobody's ever bothered to pick it up for 6,000 years until you happen to show up. Anyway, massive open worlds are really hard to make, but don't worry, even if you are a solo dev, you could be the one who makes the next Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> but if you follow these instructions carefully, you're bound to succeed at failure. Hey, thanks for watching. And you know, if you really think about it, then you may come to realize that it's just a really short word. It's just two letters, I-T. You know, if you, if you think about it. Okay, okay. I'll see myself out. I, yeah, I know, I know. I